Welcome to Brothers of the Word, because brother, you need the Word. And after I preached the sermon number 5882, it was called The Plague of Walking Away from God. And it had to do with the series of entering, entering the, the plagues of Egypt and preached that sermon. Monica came up to me afterwards. She said, Pastor, that was a really an awesome sermon. And she said, but there was one thing that if you add would take it to another whole level. And it was about how to stay walking with God instead of how the children of Israel had walked away from God. She said, if you added an accountability partner. And when she said that, I knew the truth of it. It immediately hit me. And that very day, I got an accountability partner. Someone had asked me months ago, Pastor, would you be my accountability partner? I didn't even answer him because sometimes, you know, sometimes we don't want an accountability partner. We don't want to be accountable to anybody. So I didn't, I didn't even answer him. But when she told me that, I contacted him that day. I said, you asked me months ago about being my accountability partner. I accept. Let's be accountability partners. And from that point on, I have improved tremendously with what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, I, I want to show you a video today about an accountability partner. Now, A.V., if you would, go ahead and roll this video. This is about an accountability partner. Hello. Hey, girl, I was meal prepping when you called. Okay, that's cool, girl, but we made it through day three, yay. Yeah, girl, we made it through day three. Girl, what you eat sounding like that? Girl, don't eat broccoli. And girl, you know why I'm proud of myself? Because I haven't ate no bread, and that's my weakness, honey. Have you? No, I ain't no bread in a minute. I ain't had no bread in the last two days. <laughs> Girl, I'm over here pretending this broccoli is a burger. Girl, I'm just sitting here drinking this smoothie I just made. Honey, <laughs> fool. Are you, you drinking a smoothie? Yeah, you ain't drunk tea heavy yet. I ain't drinking no more water. Girl, I'm proud of you because you love your tea. But man, this is a struggle. I want me some french fries or something. Yeah, it is a struggle, honey. I thought I was going to pass out today. But I did not give up. <laughs> Now, this is a funny, for those of you who just got the audio, this lady was sitting here eating what appeared to be a bologna sandwich, drinking wine, talking about she hadn't had anything but water in the last two days, and she was just eating broccoli. She just got this bologna sandwich on this white bread, just chomping down on it. But yet, that was her accountability partner. So her accountability partner, they were evidently on a, a multi-day special diet, and yet here the lady was talking about she was struggling through it, she wasn't giving up, and she just chomping down on that bologna sandwich. It was a good example of what an accountability partner can do as long as you're honest with the accountability partner. If you're not honest with the accountability partner, you're going to be just like that lady was. Chomping on a bologna sandwich, talking about all she was eating was broccoli and water. So I want to just talk to you today about the success force of an accountability partner. Now, I actually, when I did the first 16 of the success forces, success force number 14 was basically the success force of who you walk through life with. It was about being partnered up with the right person, but that's a lot of times that's not necessarily the accountability partner. The accountability partner is simply someone, and you all agree that you're going to be accountable to each other to get a particular goal or to go through life or to stay on a particular path. You agree that we're going to be accountable to each other. One of the things that can get people in so much trouble is when you have no accountability for what you do to anybody. Do you know what happens when you're in the dark and just nobody knows and sees what you're doing? It's like when you go out of town or even out of the country. 
it's a whole lot of mess happening. It's, it's like, you know, the, the slogan that goes, what happens in Vegas. What that means is you're in Vegas and nobody sees and nobody knows what you are doing in Vegas. They have no accountability. But when you have accountability, when you have an accountability part, it means that over a whatever period of time you choose, I have to check in with my accountability department every day and I have to email them a report and in the subject of my report is if I have failed to do anything on my list for that day. And do you know that thing keeps me on track? Because I got to tell them every day if I fail to do something and if I have missed something and it changed my performance tremendously just by having someone to report to. If you don't have anybody to report to but you, you just sometimes fall off track. That's why most New Year's resolutions by the time you hit February, 90% of them are gone. Let me just, just read you some of the stuff of the stats. Your probability of achieving something depends on being specific and committed. As a matter of fact, specific goals is success force number one. According to a study developed by the Association for Training and Development, if you simply have an idea or goal, the chances of you getting that done is close to zero. But if you consciously decide to achieve something, that increases your chances to 10% to 25%. Once you choose when and you have a clear way of how you're going to do it, your chances now bump up to 50%. If you socially commit, that dramatically increases your odds, which means when you tell somebody else or you tell the group, that drastically increases your odds, and that takes your odds up from 50% to 65%. Having an, let me go back over these, if you have an idea or a goal, let me just give you an example. Let's say, say I'm going to, you know, save $1,000. If you have an idea, say, you know, I, it sure would be nice if I could save $1,000. The chances of you doing that is almost zero when you just have an idea about the goal. You know, it would be nice to have $1,000. Sure would. It'd be nice to have $10,000. It'd be nice to get in shape. You know that? It'd be nice to do. It'd be, ni it'd be nice to read my Bible every day. That would be a good thing if I read my Bible every day. The chances of you doing that when it is just an idea or a goal is very, very low. But when you decide to do it, that bumps you up to 10 to 25 percent. That's, that's in the arena of the New Year's resolution. I'm going to do this. I'm going to save $1,000. I'm going to read my Bible every day. I'm going to do this. When you decide to do it, now you're at the New Year's resolution level, which is 10 to 25 percent. When you have a clear time and the how, I'm going to save $20 a week, for 50 weeks, and that'll give me my $1,000, and I am going to start today. I'm putting this first $20 in the bank now. When you decide and when you have a clear when and how, now you have taken your percentage up to 65%. But when you create a specific accountability appointment with a person you are committed to, now your odds go from 65% to 95%. When you get an accountability partner, you say, look, I want you to check with me every week. Every week we're going to report to each other to make sure I put that $20 in the bank. Every day we're going to check off to make sure we have read our Bible. Right now my Bible accountability partner is Christian. And we have this Bible app. And we can look and see how the other is progressing on the app. Christian, are you up to date? Yes, you are. Is, is Daddy up to date? Yes, I am. Now, now, actually, how many people were on the app with us? How many? Talk up real loud. Shout it out. 
Out of the five, how many are up to date? Two. <laughs> now, the others did not have an accountability partner. They, they didn't make the declaration. They really were in stage one. What is it? That's nice. That's a nice thing to do to read the Bible every day so we'll get through the Bible in a year. That's nice. But Christian and I said, we're going to do this thing, and we're going to keep track. So I keep track of Christian. Christian keeps track of me, and it keeps us on track, and we are on target. We're right on target with where we're supposed to be for this time of year on our Bible reading. It, it, makes, a different, it makes a difference when you really decide that I am going to do this thing and I'm going to pick a person and I'm going to have them be my accountability partner and we're going to do this thing together. Now, now the next question then becomes, well, how do you choose an accountability partner? Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10 says this, two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. That's why you need an accountability partner. You don't need an accountability partner if you're 100% on your own. You don't. If you can do it all by yourself and you got a good track record of, of whatever you say you're going to do, you get it done. You don't need an accountability partner. But how many of us have said stuff that we're going to do and we start out just all fired up about it? You check back with us next month. Sometimes it's just check back with us next week. Sometimes check back with us tomorrow. And we have totally lost the fire. Some people can do this thing on their own, but almost Everybody does better when they have an accountability partner. So what do you look for? Why the two who can do so much? So when one falls, when you fall off track, your accountability partner, hey, man, what's happening? Why you haven't read your Bible in the last three days? What's happening with you? So when you have an accountability partner, so when you fall it, your partner can pull you up, can pick you up, can encourage you, can bring it to your attention. Because sometimes we just lose priority of stuff. And other stuff come up and the stuff we're going to do just slide slowly to the back burner to it completely fall off the stove. So when you have an accountability partner, it changes all it. So how do you choose and what do you look for? in an accountability partner. You look for an accountability partner. First of all, the first of these is the command to be equally yoked with anyone we enter partnership with. This is 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Now, when it comes to accountability partners, this, this does not just mean those who don't believe in Christ. It means those who don't believe are going in the direction of the thing you're trying to do. That's what that means. So whatever it is you're trying to do, find an accountability partner that has a similar direction. They want to have the same goals. They want to have the same end result. Find someone who's already going or thinking about going on the path that you want to go in. That lady who was eating that bologna sandwich is not a good accountability partner if you want a healthy diet. She's just not thinking about it. So you've got to have somebody who's geared or whose mentality is geared to the way you want to go. If you're going to walk with someone, you have to have somebody who's going to walk. I've got to go. My, all my boys know about it. I'm planning on next year I'm going to Spain. I'm going to do the El Camino it actually was a spiritual uh, pilgrimage walk, but it's 500 miles across Spain. It's about 15 to 17 miles a day. And my sons, I have two of them who said they might go. <laughs> but the other two said, Daddy, we just not. Now, Christian will read his Bible every day, but I asked Christian, Christian, what about going with me on the walk across Spain? Christian said, All right, I ain't going. I am not going. I'm not going to walk 15, 17 miles a day across. I am not going. That, that does not interest me at all. 
I asked my other son, Josie, he's, he's the most uh, built and muscled one. He got all these big old muscles on him. I said, Josie, what about you going with dad? And well, Josie said, I ain't going no club walk no Spain. <laughs> now, he had all the muscles, but he said, that just, that, just, that just does not interest me whatsoever. I am not interested in walking 15 to 17 miles a day. That's not on my bucket list. It's not only not on my bucket list, it's not on any kind of list I got. It's not even on in a piece of paper anywhere remotely to me. I don't want to do that. But I have two of my other sons who said they, the oldest and the youngest, both of them said they may be interested. It sounds intriguing, and they want to do this with Daddy. So I know there's no need of having Two of the sons walk with me who have no desire to walk. You've got to have an accountability partner. Now, Christian, we can walk through the Bible. We're just not going to walk through Spain. <laughs> so so, so you've got, you got, so you got to know who you can walk with. You've got to have somebody who's geared to walk with you in the direction and in the area that you want to walk. And, and there's so many of us. And there are goals that we have set. There are things that God has told us to do, the things we want to do, and we just haven't done them or we started and we've fallen off. And oftentimes the big reason is because we don't have a partner. We don't have anyone to be accountable to. So that's the first thing is you've got to have somebody who is walking in the same direction that you're in. Second thing is you need somebody you can trust. Because if you've got an accountability partner, they see you in your ups and your downs. And they can know some things about you as you begin to talk about it, as you go through trials and tribulations. You, you open up secrets sometimes. You got to have somebody. You can trust you. You don't need an accountability partner who's the town gossip. The whole church know about your business. The whole office will know about your business. Sometimes the whole city will know about your business. You know, see, even some politicians, they hook up with folk for first thing they know they got a book on them you got to have somebody you can trust or all your secrets will go out in the world so you need someone who is trustworthy and you also need someone who's going to be truthful with you you don't need somebody just going to be just mellow and baby you and pamper you all the time you need somebody who's going to tactfully tell you the truth and you need to empower them to tell you the truth. So look, I want you to be my accountability department. But look, when you see me getting off track, when you see me done, I've, I've not done something two or three days in a row, you need to let me know. You need to call me on the carpet about this thing. You need to empower them to correct you, to challenge you, to chastise you. And let them know quick, I'm not going to get offended because you tell me this. I remember it was one fella I was working with and he had a real big incentive to reach this goal. I said, look, in order for you to reach this goal, you're going to need to do about three things. I told him one thing to do. I told him another thing to do. And I said, the third thing to do is you need to send a daily report to five people. And one of those people on your list need to be somebody who wants you to fail. He said, he said, Pastor, why, why you want me to send it to one person who wants you? Because that's the very person you don't want to fail with. Because you know they want you to fail. Now, four people will cheer you on, but I want you to pick one person that you know wants you to fail. And you don't, because see, you don't like to tell somebody who, that you didn't, you didn't flop who's looking for you to flop. And you need four people who will cheer you on, but I want you to send it to one person who wants you to fail. Because they know I don't want to have a failure in front of this person. But you always need four cheerleaders for every one hater. You always got to have more haters in your life. I mean, more cheerleaders than haters. So you have to make sure that balance is right. But, but you have to have somebody who's going to be truthful with you. And if you get a good accountability partner, it'll make a real difference in your world. Then you need to have, you need to have a detailed and a dated reporting program. What it is you want to do, when you're going to report, every day by 11 o'clock p.m., I'm going to have this report to you. So if you don't have that report next day, what happened to your report? Uh, well, make sure you don't make it. Go ahead and send it to me now. What happened to your report? So when you have a detail, and then what you're going to report on? We got a situation. I've got, I've got a particular 
goal of being able to do 25 military style pull ups. They have a particular goal of something else. Both of the goals involve 25. So every day I have to put on there how many of them 25 pull ups I can do. And see, when I, before I had the accountability partner, I, I just hadn't done any pull ups, I don't know how long. But once I had the accountability partner, I had to put there every day how many pull-ups I can do. And it keeps it in front of my mind. I put it there last night. Matter of fact, I put it there last night and I put a question mark by it. I put a question mark by it because I hadn't checked it in three or four days. And I had put on my figure what I had done last time. But when I kept seeing it, and when I put that question mark, what do you mean question mark? I hadn't checked it. Well, check it. <laughs> so when I checked it, I'm halfway. I could do, well, I'm not quite halfway because 12 and a half is halfway. I'm at 12. So it's a big goal, and, and you have to struggle to get those last 13. Each one is just, every one you go up is just a hard-fought battle. But when I don't have an accountability partner, it just slips my mind. I lose focus of it, and I won't get that goal without having somebody to walk with me through it. And then I had to ask them, where you at on your 25? Yeah, you're asking me about my 25. Where you at on your 25? <laughs> so it, it, just, it just makes a difference when you have an accountability partner. It helps you to do what you have set your goal to do. Two are always much stronger than one. And many of you, it's going to make a world of difference in just what you want, just by getting you a really good accountability partner. And you've got to prioritize your accountability. I mean, the problem that most of us have when we really don't get something done, it's not that we don't want to do it. We let other stuff take priority. Because one thing I found, people generally do what they want to do. Oh, folk do what they want to do. They, they really, really do. I, I, was, I was going back and listening to a, a sermon of mine that I preached a while back, something I hadn't realized. But, but you know there are no handicapped spots at the liquor stores? You ever notice that? And no handicapped spots. And I'm like, why, why are there no handicapped spots? Because folk, when they want their liquor, don't nothing stop them. <laughs> don't nothing, you don't need no handicapped spot at the liquor store when folk want their liquor. Don't nothing stop them. I don't care if they're on crutches and a wheelchair. I don't care what it is. I don't, they don't need no, mm. And I, I forget, I noticed that, and I hadn't realized it until I listened to the sermon a while back. But yeah, there, there, there are no handicapped spots at the liquor store. Because folk, when they want their liquor, nothing will stop them from getting their liquor. So when folk really want to do something, nothing stops them from doing it. Our priorities get off. And that's why an accountability partner will help you keep you on the priorities that you have set to do. Pick you somebody who's going in the direction that you want to go in. Give them the authority to correct you, to call you on the carpet about some things. Set up a plan where you all communicate at a designated schedule that's regular. And watch what happens in your life. See, see, even God, to be honest about it, is just is not the best accountability partner because we tune him out. We really do. We tune him out. God trying to speak to our consciousness, and we are tuned the Lord out. So you need somebody you can hear. <laughs> you, you need somebody who's going to call you up, who's going to text you, who's going to email you, who's going to get in your face about what you all have agreed to accomplish. It's one of those prime success forces, the success force of an accountability partner. Now, see, that's why the Bible, it has so much in there about, about two people and how you basically check each other and you encourage each other. Those are, those are partners. It doesn't have specifically about an accountability partner, but it does have a lot about when you see a person in error and all of this kind of stuff, that's really accountability at its essence. But you give someone the authority 
to check on you, to check you, to make sure you're going in the direction where you want to go. And watch what's going to happen to the stuff you want to do. Just watch the difference it will make in your world. Because some of us got challenges about, some of us got challenges about a whole lot of stuff. Pick the thing that will make the biggest difference in your life that you're not doing and get an accountability partner to get that thing done. And watch what happens in your world. You can go to brothersoftheword.com. You can listen to this message. You can listen to all of the Success for series. If you want to take your life to another level, go and listen or watch the series entitled Success Forces. Thank you for joining us today at Brothers of the Word because, brother, you need the Word. <laughs> amen, amen, and, and amen, amen. How many of you all have an, an accountability partner? If you've got an accountability partner, raise your hand. We've got just, just a few. How many of you all want an accountability partner? All right, we've got a few who, who want an accountability partner. All right, well, if you want an accountability partner, follow those guidelines that I gave and contact them today because if you procrastinate on it if you don't do it today your chances tomorrow have dropped in half you let it go two days you're down to 25 percent the longer you delay the less likely you will get it done so if you want an accountability partner contact them today have them listen to this message it'll be up in a couple of days set your detailed reporting guidelines and go ahead and take your life to another level as we move towards a greater level of success.